name is Joel Meyer. I'm an environmental toxicologist here at the Nicholas School. And I'm standing in today to tell you, for Heather Stapleton, who's the head of this concentration, to tell you about the Ecotoxicology and Environmental Health Program uh, here at the Nicholas School. This is our mission statement and scope. We are focused on trying to train students to understand toxicology, chemistry, risk assessment, and take this, those sciences and apply them towards understanding the way contaminants affect, affect human health and affect ecological health. Uh, the approach we have is very multidisciplinary, including people who are toxicologists, people who are uh, chemists, people who do risk assessment, people who do uh, epidemiological work. So we try to bring all of those, those fields into this area. A little description of our program and the courses. Uh, we have, you need to have 48 credits uh, at the end of your, your time, six of eight of, of two of which are associated with the master's project, which I'll tell you a little bit more about in just a moment. We have four required courses, environmental toxicology, environmental health, um, one of two environmental chemistry courses, either environmental organic chemistry or aquatic geochemistry, which is more inorganic focused, uh, and then human and ecological risk assessment. Um, so those are the core courses, and then you take a bunch of other courses that are determined by your particular area of interest. Uh, we ask you to come up with an area of specialization, which will be either toxicology, so focusing on the effects of chemicals on health, um, or chemistry, understanding how chemicals move through the environment, what regulates where they move, how they move, how they break down, how they change. Uh, and environmental health and epidemiology, which is more of a uh, big picture human health study. And the toxicological concentration is a little bit more focused on sort of mechanisms of toxic chemicals. Um, we ask you to take a graduate level statistics course, one social science course, um, and this can be policy, econ, law, there's a whole bunch of them based on your interests. Uh, and one tools course to provide training in a quantitative framework applied to real world scenarios. Um, something, a, a common one is GIS, Geographic Information Systems. There are quite a few others as well. One thing I wanted to address is this is a Master's of Environmental Management program, and people very frequently ask, how is that different from a Master's of Science program? And the, the answer is sort of twofold. The first thing is that we do, in addition to the quantitative sciences that we teach, uh, we ask you to learn a lot about management skills. Um, and that's because we're, we're trying to ask you to figure out how to apply really good science to really important management problems. Um, that said, we do offer um, a research track which allows you to essentially do something very much like an MS degree. Um, in this case, rather than taking a few credit hours towards your master's project, um, you take quite a few more hours and you spend the summer in between your two years of classes in the laboratory of one of the people here at Duke, usually very occasionally somewhere when it's someone at one of the area institutions like EPA or NIH. Um, and you come up with a master's project based on that, but it's much more time intensive and much more research intensive. Um, we don't have more than one student in one of our labs at a time doing this, so it's a, it's a subset of folks that do that. Uh, but it does let you get the level of research experience that you would get out of an MS program elsewhere while still getting the management related coursework. Um, yeah, one thing to note about that is that in most MS students uh, programs, you would enter the program to say, I'm going to work with so-and-so. Uh, in this case, you come into the program and decide, usually in your first semester, if this is what you want to do. Uh, and during that time, also decide which lab you want to work in. Some examples of master's projects, you'll have some ideas of what, what students have done. The master's project, I've said a lot about this, is a big component of the MEM, so in addition to your coursework, you do a master's project, which is um, anything from a research project like I just described to something that more like an internship that you then write up uh, and present here as part of your academic program. So a couple of examples, uh, Axel Berkey a couple of years ago is one of my advisees, uh, but worked with Bill Pan. And he did sediment transport, artisanal gold mining, and the evaluation of potential mercury contamination in Madre de Dios, Peru. 
Um, Abigail McEwen did Potential Health Risks of Trace Elements in Adobe Brick Houses in a Historical Mining Town, Cote to see Bolivia. Uh, Rebecca and Michelle did Investigating Human Exposure to uh, Perfluoral alcohol, alcohol Substances in Indoor Environments. Um, down here we've got Jen and Peyton who looked at flame retardants in camping gear. And actually one of them, Jen, now works for REI because she did such a, a great job on that project. Turns out they put flame retardants in your camping gear which is interesting, a lot of it. Here's some pictures of people doing some of their master's projects. Uh, this is catching fish in the river and what is a tributary of the Amazon. <laughs> Rachel's not down there. <laughs> um, collecting samples to look at coal combustion byproducts and potential hexavalent chromium contamination in Tennessee. This was associated with a coal ash spill. Uh, and brine spills from the uh, Bakken Shale in North Dakota. People also frequently do MP research projects uh, with area companies. Um, and generally the goal there is that we're looking for a valuable research, research experience for you guys and also a company or organization that can use your work to, to learn something that they want to learn. Uh, so it's meant to be both a, a, a learning experience and sort of an internship and introduction to the kind of work that you might go on to afterwards. And that leads to the question of, you know, what kind of job might you get with this degree? More than half of our graduates are hired by consulting companies. Um, uh, here's an example of Lauren from a few years ago working with Cardinal Chemrisk. Um, many others go on to work with government agencies, um, EPA, Fish and Wildlife, NOAA, uh, are, are some of the many that have hired our, our folks. Um, many go on to work with nonprofit research based agencies, um, and so this could be environmental advocacy or lobbying groups or uh, research groups, a lot of uh, different types of, of uh, NGOs. And I didn't put academia up here, but I, about, I would say, one student every other year or so ends up going on to get a PhD, um, either immediately or sometimes farther on down the road. So. The bulk, I would say, go into consulting companies um, or government agencies and a smaller number of NGOs and, and academia.